praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for that privilege He has given us to be among the living and to be able to have um, this time together again. His name we praise forever in Jesus' name. And by His mercies, we want to consider a new topic, um, which of course is also important. And the title of today's message is When God Asks for Your Isaac. When God Asks for Your Isaac. And our texts are from the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 12. And then the popular verse, John 3, verse 16. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 12. And John chapter 3, verse 16. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we appreciate you for the time, um, you, for all that you have done for us in the year. We appreciate you for bringing us to the month of July, the seventh month of the year. We are grateful for your faithfulness, for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your love, and for all that you have been doing in our lives and family. Father, we say be exalted in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, we want to thank you for our spiritual life. Thank you because you have not made the enemies to triumph over us. We are grateful. Father, we say we are adored in Jesus' name. We pray that as we go into this um, topic, you speak to us yourself. And at the end, let your name be glorified. Give us the grace to be able to release our Isaac unto you. Thank you, King of Glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So just like I mentioned to us earlier, our topic of discussion today is when God asks for your Isaac. When God asks for your Isaac. Um, it is important for us to know that um, the Almighty God that we serve you know, we sometimes also ask us and um, to give him some things. You know, um, you, you just need to understand that as Christians. So as his beloved, and uh, sometimes the Almighty God will ask us to give him some things. And sometimes it could be those things that are very important or precious to us. Um, but then we need to remember that this Almighty God we're talking about, he, 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 no matter what he asks us, he cannot be uh, compared to that which he did for us earlier on because the Bible makes us understand in our second main says that's John chapter 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that means that you know God himself has shown that love to us by giving us his own precious son his own only and begotten his own his own uh, precious son and his only and uh, begotten son which is our Lord Jesus Christ meaning that you know God has you know given us a, a, a good example of who he is and sometimes he may also request that I will also be like him so this is just for us to know that God can as well ask us to give him those things that are precious to us and if we are truly his children and so um, that's just for us to give us the introduction to what we want to talk about um, but for us to have a better understanding we just want you all to know that although the almighty God we, all of us to know him as uh, Jehovah Jireh we know him as and the great provider we know him as the one and that is able to do all things but it's important for us also to also remember that sometimes just like i've established earlier he may also want he, no, not that not even sometimes he desires for us to be like him and so sometimes we may want to and test our level of growth our level of spiritual growth and for him to um, be able to assess how far um we have we have we have progressed and in that journey of being like his precious son so brothers and sisters, it is good for us to know that God can ask us and to give us something precious to us. And for instance, in the case of uh, Father Abraham in the scriptures, um, like we all know, Abraham was a friend of God. He was someone that uh, many of us we call today as the father of faith. But then before he became called that particular father of faith, he had um, this test that he had to pass. And that was a test of his love for God. You know, the Bible makes us understand in our first main text, that's Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 12, that God asked him to give him a um, give him his son. And, and the son we're talking about now is 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 his, his beloved son, that's Isaac, and which also means laughter. Brothers and sisters, it is important for us to remember that this Isaac is uh, it was actually a promised child, it was the child that Abraham and, and Mother Sarah had to wait for for a long time before they could have him. And now imagine if you have been trusting God for something, um, I don't know, maybe it's a car, or your house, or whatever you have been trusting God for. And even when 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 you when God has actually given you that thing and you have celebrated it, you have given testimony in church, and God then comes back maybe a month after or a few years after to then ask you to give that thing back to him. You know, sometimes it's 
confusing. I mean, if sometimes some of us might even want to bind that spirit, thinking that it's not from God. So that was the uh, the situation that Father Abraham found himself. You know, he has trusted God for a child. You know, many times he will ask, you know, God will show him, um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the sky, count the number of uh, the stars, and your, your seed will be uh, as many numerous as the stars. You know, he waited um, to that time where the promise of God will become fulfilled in his life. And eventually when God uh, gave him that Isaac, you know, when God did not talk to him when Isaac was a year old, two years old, but at a later time, God asked him, to sacrifice that son Isaac. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know that um, in as much as we are God's beloved, in as much as uh, we are in this journey of faith, in as much as we uh, we proclaim that we are born again and then we say that we are we, we, we are we are children of God, a time will come where God will also test us and uh, to know our level of growth, our level of faith and uh, in him and by asking us to give him our own Isaac. And I pray that at that time, he will give us the grace to um, be able to pass that test just as Father Abraham passed in the name of Jesus. And then if you look at this story critically, we'll see that um, God did not um, ask Abraham to give him Ishmael. Because if God had done so, it would have been easier for Father Abraham uh, to release Ishmael for the Lord Jesus. Sorry, for the Almighty God. But then God knew that um, Isaac, in a way, is uh, at that time, of course, from my own assessment, uh, will be something that is, um, I don't want to use the word most precious because he still had his wife there, but something very precious to him. And so God was clear that, give me your, if you look at that verse 1 of Genesis 22, he says, your, 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 your son, you know, whom you love. So God was so sure of the fact that he loved this particular son. So God asked him uh, to give him this son that he loved. Um, but then um, one important thing we need to remember from this story or that we must not forget is the fact that God um, himself knew that um, he was just testing Abraham. It's not that God was just trying to um, be wicked and was just like a test of faith. As, well, as believers, we need to know that God will test us um, at when that time comes and for us to be able to, you know, to assess his, um, how far we have grown in him and also to assess our level of faith in him. And I pray that we will not fail that test in the name of Jesus. And so what we are saying is, in essence is that God asked um, for the Abraham for um, his son Isaac and it was not because God wanted um, his son to, to die or just God wanted him to just sacrifice his son. It was just that God wanted uh, to test um, Father Abraham's feet. And so today, um, God might not ask us to give our son or our daughters um, um, for, um, to him, but then you know, the, our Isaac could be anything that is precious to us and so today by the grace of god we want to look at some other forms of isaac that god can ask from us and yet the first one we want to talk about is um is our titan offering you know, many of us um we still struggle in this aspect and uh, because and um, if we are still struggling in this aspect that means that uh, god knows that it's precious to us and um, i know that sometimes depending on um, on on our, our spiritual state, uh, or let me say, uh, joining in faith. Sometimes some people can find it very difficult uh, to pay tithe and to, you know, to pay offerings. And for that, you know, as children of God, we need to know that it's just for God does not need our money. He does not need um, the no matter the currency that you earn. God is not interested. All that He wants is for us to trust Him. And so God can actually ask us and uh, to give our tithe and offering just for Him to assess our level of uh, trust in Him. The second thing that God can ask from us is our first fruit. Of course, this is um, and goes beyond um, just paying tight. It, it's a, another level of trust in Him. I pray that it will help us in this regard in Jesus' name. So I don't want to, um, you know, I, I just want us to understand that God, in His infinite mercies, He can do all things and He can ask us anything precious to us. So sometimes, you know, depending on your level of faith or our level of faith, He can ask us to give us. Um, to give him our first truth. I pray that he give us the grace to be obedient, to be able to do this in Jesus' name. But then he has made the general call anyway to all believers. And we can see that um, in the text we have on the screen. And we have that in Exodus 23, um, verse 19. You can see that in Exodus 23, verse 10. And we can also see that in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. So, brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that God can ask us and so, um, of course, yes, it's not that he can ask us, he really asks us to give us and uh, to give him our first fruit. Another thing that God can ask you and I today 
um, that in a way is another form of Isaac is our time. Many believers today uh, will find it difficult to waste our time and um, to serve God. And uh, because, you know, in a, in a general language, let me say there's a common saying that time is money. So we, we, we some even prefer to trade that time um, so that they can have money. So sometimes you know, coming to church, serving God, might be something difficult to do because um, they, they could actually do that, you know, use that time in exchange for money. So brothers and sisters, uh, if you look at the, the case of um, Peter uh, before he became an apostle, you know, he was with his boat. And God, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, needed his boat to be able to teach the people. And then he asked Peter, you know, if he could, act, and he, he, he had to use the boat of Peter to be able to, to teach the people. You know, and that took you know, a while. Brothers and sisters, God can and, and can request your time. You can request for your time. He can ask you and to give him his. And of course, that's what he's even asking us today. He wants us to have that relationship with him in, in our devotions, our prayer time. And like we've already been saying on this platform, that prayer itself is a way of communicating with God. So God wants us to communicate with him. And that takes time. You know, he wants us to have that relationship with him. And that also takes time. So brothers and sisters, one of the things that God is also requesting for you and I today is our time. And so the fourth one we also need to remember is that God can also ask us um, to give our resources. Our resources you know, go beyond just money. You know, resources can come in, in any form. Sometimes it could be uh, the use of your car. Uh, it could be the use of your room. Maybe for us fellowship. It could be the use of whatever you have. You know, Maybe giving some of those things that you don't need. And to the needy maybe you know just you maybe know, for evangelism sake um i don't know so god could just ask you know or maybe um for instance you are a unit and they know that you have um, a, a particular device that they need they could you know request for that device so that they can use it I mean, to serve god and for god's purpose so brothers and sisters it's important for you and i to know that you know and some of us we could see those things that god is asking us as as things that are so precious to us and so god could make a demand of those things. It's our prayer that God give us the grace and to be able to release um, any of this when He calls uh, for them in Jesus' name. But then we need to remember uh, the promise. And the promise is the fact that uh, God is only testing us. It's not that He can He can do without those things. In fact, He can even you know, get somebody else that will give Him any of those things that He's asking us. And so, but then the, the reward is what we have on the screen. That's in Luke chapter 6, 38. He says we should give. And then he said, you will receive. He said, your gift will return to you in full. So meaning that whatsoever we give to God, it will come back to us in full. He said, press down, shaking together and um, making room for, make room for running over. He said, pour into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give. So meaning that um, sometimes you could also give a, 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 a support. So when we give support, you know, whatever we give out you know, to God, we we'll always have that and will return, even a multiple fold. And I pray that as many of us that have been giving, we will not lose our reward in Jesus' name. And for those that are yet and to cultivate that habit of giving, God will encourage us to do that effectively in the name of Jesus. Another thing that God can request for you and I is our life. You know, when God is asking I me mean, for first fruit, tight, you know, there's these things that some of us can still do. But then God could actually say, yes, what I now want is your entire life. And we can say that in the life of Apostle Paul. You know, Paul, before um, before he became Apostle Paul, he was Saul, and then we all knew what he did, you know, in, rec in all the havoc he did against the Christians. But the time came where God said, yes, it's time for me to now you know, have you to be mine. And that was what happened to Apostle Paul. God actually requested, you know, for everything about him. God wanted his intellect. God desired him to serve him. And then he released himself. To the service of God. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know that God can request that He wants you to serve Him fully, not part time, not that you'll be adding one or two things to whatever you are doing for Him. You want to have all of you, and that is what can happen to anyone. So, brothers and sisters, this is just to encourage us that that is another form of Isaac that God can ask from any of His beloved children. Another thing God can also ask is our career, our life as our ambitions. So, uh, we have seen cases of people. Uh, many of many men of God I will say today never you know thought of becoming pastors or bishops or apostles as we call them today. Many of them you know, want to be um, um to, to follow their career to become um, doctors, lecturers, um, prof uh, professors, um, become lawyers, engineers, accountants, bankers, um, IT professionals, and the likes, nurses. You know, but then when God you know um, had this demand on them. 
and for them to release their career, to relieve, to release their aspiration, to release their life as well, to release their ambitions to him. They just have to obey. And so, and then you can see the examples in the scriptures of um we have Prophet Elisha. Elisha was you no know, you know, from what we know in the in, in the uh, in, in, in the old testament, I think in first Kings nineteen verse ninety two twenty one, when he was you know, attending to the to, to the animals and the, um uh, Prophet Elijah came and then that was how and he became his disciple and then eventually he became a prophet Elisha. And we can also remember the story that we shared earlier. I'm talking about Peter. Peter initially was a fisherman. And then at the end of the story, in that Luke 5, verse 1 to 11, Jesus told him, From you no, know, you will become a fisher of men. Brothers and sisters, I just want us to remember that God can make a demand on that your profession, on that thing that you like so much. As I pray that God give us the grace to release and those things when He make a demand and for them in Jesus' name. And then the final thing we just want us to know that God can make a demand on anything that is important to us. And so the in, the the list is uh, is inexhaustible. There's no way we can exhaust the list. You can make a demand of anything. And the final the example we give in that regard is that of uh, Sister Mary. Sister Mary at that time, and um, like we all know, was a virgin. And of course, most virgins they they want to you know preserve their virginity. They want to you know, say that oh they got married and been a virgin, and they want the husband and to certify the fact that they were they they they, they were made as virgins. But then, in the case of Mary, you know, the Bible says that he, 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 although she was a virgin, but then she was found with a child. You know, God, you know, had to, you know, God in a way, you know, that virginity was, I want to believe that the virginity was precious to her. But then God had a demand of, of, of that. And because God wanted a virgin that would be able to conceive our Lord Jesus Christ to be born into this world. And so, in a way, she had to release that, that, you know, that test, virginity testimony in court. Because nobody would believe that. And she was a virgin when the when she had the Lord Jesus, you know, in her womb. I pray that God, God will give us the grace and to be able to release whatsoever He asks us, no matter how precious um, that particular thing to us in Jesus' name. And so in conclusion, we just want to stress on these two important points and for you, for all of us and to remember. And the first thing we want us to know is that God will always or we only request for Isaac from those He trusts. Brothers and sisters, if you know that God is asking you to release your, any Isaac to you, I'm sorry, any Isaac to him. It is important for you to know that he loves you. He knows that you know, he, he trusts you. He knows that you can do it. And that's why he's, he's asking you. You know, and there's no father that will ask a child, a child that is probably um, uh, uh, like that like is still like he's still um, uh, a, a baby. Now let me so to speak. Let me just say a, a child that is maybe two years or a, a three years or a toddler, you know, that will ask that particular toddler to now, to now um, probably um, start reading the book, you know, reading a book or, or solving calculus, a mathematical question calculus. No, 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 for, no reason for that will do that. So the reason for that will only ask, you know, that particular child or that particular son or the daughter what he or she can do. So when God is asking us for our uh, eyes, Isaac, and no matter that what Isaac, that Isaac means to us, it's important for us to know that he knows that we can do it, and he trusts us that we can do it. And the second thing that we also need to remember as we conclude today's sermon, also today's message, is the fact that our God is not a wicked God. You know, sometimes when you know, just like the example we gave, and the, the example of God asking Father Abraham to release Isaac unto him. You know, many of us, if you look at it physically, you could say that maybe God is just and just being wicked, but our God is never wicked. God forbid, He's never wicked. He's just like we said when we read the story, you know, further in that Genesis 22 verse 1 to 12. He said that it, just, it was just a test. Brothers and sisters, we must remember that God is not wicked. No matter what He has asked us, He's just giving us a test. And of course, like you all, we are all of us are in schools, and most of us who are going to schools, when there is a test or when there is an examination, it's an opportunity to be promoted. So it means that when God is testing you and I, you know, with any demand that He's making, it's an opportunity for us to be blessed, an opportunity for us to be promoted, it's an opportunity for us, you know, to um, take Him to a higher level of work with Him. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, we will not fail our test in Jesus' name. And so as we um, as, as we bring this um, this um, this um, discussion to a close, we just want to give room to as many that are yet and to I've said the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Or perhaps you have you know, done that before, and but then you have gone back into the world. This is an opportunity for you to come back to that love of God. 
we want to tell you that Jesus loves you, God loves you, and that is why He has, you know, given this opportunity for you to be able to hear this message again and for you also to know that He still cares about you. So we want to give you that opportunity and to just give a lot to Jesus again. And if you have, if you have never done that before, we want to give you the opportunity to accept Him as a Lord and personal Savior. So if you're ready to do that, can you just please keep it this prayer of your after Just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for uh, this message. Thank you for bringing me to this time and season. Thank you for all that you have done for me the year. And today, I claim the fact that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Please wash me with your blood and make me whole again. And today, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you accept me into the fold. I pray that you will wash me. I pray that you give me the Holy Spirit and that you make me a child of yours. Thank you for accepting me. And today, I, I, I pray in the name of the, the last day, give me the grace to raise with to reign with you in eternity. Write my name in the book of life. And on the last day, give me that grace to reign with you in eternity. Thank you for accepting me. For in Jesus' powerful name I have prayed. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if you have made a prayer with us, we can grab and grace you for making the best decision anybody can ever make. I want to tell you that all of us that will see today in the Christian for we started like this. And so God of heaven will keep you and in this perfect path of salvation in Jesus. And so I want to encourage you to please find a Bible believing church around you, find a Bible teaching church around you, you know, fellowship with them and let the, the set man of the church, let the pastors or anyone that you, you find in the church know that you have just given that to Jesus so that they can mentor you and then they can actually you know um, train you on how to continue in this part of salvation. On that thing we just want to say is that we should please try to embrace prayer because prayer itself is the will of us communicating time for that. So from now on God is even Father. Take the time, pray, talk to Him, and then I, I assure you that as you, as you pray to Him, He will answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. At the same time, I also want to encourage you to please read your scripture, read the Bible, and please take your time to study the scriptures so that we can know the mind of God, what God wants you to do, what he, the way of life He wants from or desires from us. And I pray that as you do all of this, the Lord will strengthen and uphold you and also help us to in Jesus. Now, and then if you don't have um a bible if you don't you can just please send us an email send us an email and our email address is sec and dot ambassadors at gmail.com you can also give us a call or send a text message using any of the phone numbers on the screen so i pray that the good lord that uh, has brought you to uh, this, this marvelous light will sustain will keep you to that perfect day in jesus name so as we close today we want to um uh, quick pray i want to have this prayer and then we'll call it and we, we bring this um, discussion to a close. Our prayer today is, our dear Heavenly Father, please give us the grace to release our Isaac unto you when you call in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give us that grace to release our Isaac unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, give us that grace to release our Isaac to you. So no matter what you ask us, help us to be able to release such unto you in Jesus' name. Give us that grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because of answered for in Jesus' most powerful name we are prayed. Amen. So I want to sincerely appreciate you and uh, for your time today. I want to believe that I've believe that you have been blessed. I pray that the good Lord will give us that grace and uh, to be able to the grace and um, to, to release our Isaac um, unto him whenever he calls and uh, for Isaac in the name of Jesus. I also want to encourage you to please subscribe to our channel if I get to do so, so that together we can continue to grow. A second coming of Christ ambassador. So on this note, I want to say a very big thank you to you for joining us. I want to wish us all a wonderful week ahead. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.